What's good, you guys? It's your boy, Jay Freshman, back with another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be going over mixing. So I'm pretty much about to mix this beat that I did for the Southside review. Um, his new sample pack on Splice, which is called I Invented Trap. If you haven't watched that, please go back to watch that. Um, it's, you know, just going over the new sounds that he has in this pack, and it's sick. So, And this is where the beat thrive from. So starting off, when I do my mixing, I um, took this from BusyWorks Beats. He goes by ABC, meaning amplitude, balance, and clarity. And honestly, that is like a real like good way to start your mix. And when it comes to mixing, there's hella ways. Like, don't get caught up on wh which one is the right way. There's no right way. You feel me? There's too many um, approaches to mixing for it to just be one way. So without a further to do, let's just jump in. So what I like to do is um, you always want to pick like a main point. Um, usually it's like the drums because it depends on your genre. Like, and when it comes to like hip hop and trap, we're, t we're more about the bass and the kicks more than anything. Like that shit has to stick out. So since I'm in, so first find out your genre and understand the sound, like what is loud, like what is more present than all the other sounds. And then you level everything around that. So first part is leveling. So I'm gonna start off with the kicks. So usually I would want my kicks to hit at nine. And this is not like a, it is a set rule, but I'm saying like, you don't have to do it like this. The reason why I started at nine, because look, when you have all these sounds, <laughs> which is not a lot, <laughs> but it's it still makes up, it still multiply. Like if I start at 90 B on my kick and then I add all the other sounds, it's probably going to go all the way up to like three or maybe even zero. And that means you're like clipping. Like if it gets past you, you're clipping. But you don't want it to get too high because it's like, remember, you want artists to get on a beat. So if your headroom only has like 3B, um, 3DB of headroom, then that's like not enough room for the artist to get on. And it's just going to sound crappy and all that. So a safe thing, a safe zone for me is 9DB. And, uh, and that's what it is. It's just a safe zone. A lot of people have a different place. Some people do it like 12. Some people do it 18. I wouldn't go s stupid low like that, but you know, if it works, it works. But anyways, so so now I got at nine. Now you think about what's the next important part of your mix, and like I said in um, trap and hip hop, you know, it's the kicks, eight oh eight, hi hat, snare. Well, for me, that's how I like to do it. So going in that order, eight oh eight time. See, the 808 is definitely overpowering. And also, what the 808 is also doing is jumping a lot. Like, look how it, it starts from like 9 dB, goes up to 6, then to 3. Like, that shit is jumping way too much. And as you can see, like, another thing to point out, look how the lines start to break. Like, it's not like a solid line. Most times, I like to... See, I don't have my third-party plugins set up, so for this video, it's going to really kind of be stock plugins because I just, like, restarted and upgraded my whole computer, then get the chance to put the third-party in. But um, with that, jumping like that, I mean, when yeah, when it's jumping like that, most of the time, that means it might be in stereo. So I'm going to put the um, 808 in mono. So now you see that. It's just a flat line. So we got, we took care of that part. But now we got to take care of it jumping so much. So let's add a limiter. Even though I said amplitude and balance and clarity, you still want to follow that. It's just, you know, once you be mixing for a while, then you know which one. You could kind of get out of order, but still be in, like, make everything flow. So the limiter is good because you can see what's happening. Like, look how it boosts all the way up like that. 
So I could just even limit it, really. So now it's not going to go past 9 dB. And then now I could level it. Like, so when it comes to level, you want to find a good pocket. Um, and by pocket, it just means like, so we want the kicks to stand out more. So the 808 cannot be louder than a kick. And if you if you don't have like a good air or anything, this um, look at your dB meter. You see how it's hitting both at 9 dB? And then you can just check the difference like that. Um, you also want to this. You also want to do it by air as well, like because dB could be tricky. You feel me? So, but as long as you below the um the kick dB, you're gonna be good. So like. What I like to do is I like to check the lows, see if like that's way too low, that's way too high. Right there is a good median right there. Probably could go a little lower. Right there is good. Then a hi hat. I said a. I said a hi hat instead of the snare necks because the hi hat gives it the bounce, the rhythm. You feel me? That's like that's like the main thing after the the kicks and eight ways to me. So. And you don't want it to be too um. You don't want it to really be louder than the bass. If anything, just at the bass. So you know. See how low it is. If that's too low for you, you want to get it. That's too high. And usually the kick, um, the snare could be level with the kick. The snare is tricky because, and that's why I said sometimes you can't really go by dB because it it goes into you know frequency as well. You know it has a high frequency, so it makes it like the perception of it is going to make it seem like it's louder. So I can have a smack like that, but for me, I don't really like having my snares too loud. I don't know why my open hi-hats is sounding off. That's crazy. Let me check that pattern. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> but. Yeah, you just want to watch your levels. So I know it sounds good right here, but it just sounds um, still loud. And that's because it's a high frequency. So like I said, you're going to perceive it a lot louder. So I'm going to just cut off some of the highs. See, now it's not too crazy. See, I don't need it to be that bright. And there's probably like a comparison frequency that I want to take out. Yeah, that 
that shit person. Now we can add a melody, you feel me? See? Everything, man, mixing really starts with leveling, G, because sometimes, you know, I'll be hearing other producers' beats that is just beginning, and it's like everything is so loud. Leveling is where you're really going to get the magic first. See, this shit is already coming in hot. So this is more of gain staging. I'll, pop, I'll explain that in another video. But if something is already too hot, like... It still sounds lo loud as hell when it's this low. So, you know, you want to turn it down in the channel rack first. Fine. You don't want it too low because that's the main melody. You don't want it too high. I can turn off my my vocals. So I already EQ the um, melody. So I'm gonna just show you what I did. Let's hear how it sound without the um, EQ, and I'll explain it. So off the back, I didn't like that high frequency buzzing noise. Like, so I was like, let me take that out. So I took that out and then I boosted some back up because if I just kept it flat, then it just sounds plain. You feel me? I, st I still wanted to, the buzz, but not like crazy. So just mess around with it, like hear it. Like that shit sounds sick. And then obviously take out the lows because you know, you want your bass to um, come through. to the left that just sounds better and usually open hats be to the left there is some standard kind of panning rules that you could follow like 10 percent high hats to the left or right um open hats to the left melodies to the left um chord progressions to the right those are like standard shit so you could follow those see it's still playing on the right. Now it's more to the left. That's why I said the air can trick you sometimes. So you really gotta use both. So with the hi hat, you can just do it like pan it a little. I wish I had my um, isotope plug-in set up, then, then we could like mess with the um, stereo separation. That is like the best plug-in for stereo separation. But what I will do is, I'll probably just split this video because 
Mixing, I could just mix it all in one video, but it would just be too like fast. And I want to explain a, um, a few things to you guys. Like I already spent like about like 13, 14 minutes on like giving y'all the um, breakdown of how to level. So I, I think I'm going to just do this in sections. So this is more leveling and panning. Since I don't have a lot of sounds, I don't have to really pan too crazy. You feel me? Now the next step is going to be um, clarity. Or um, if I get the isotope set up in time, do some little um, stereo separations. Like for the melody, it, it has some bass frequencies that is probably in stereo that I want to put in mono and etc. So just just keep tuning in. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to it, share it with your other producer friends that are just now beginning and trying to understand how to mix. Let them know that it starts off with leveling, leveling first. <laughs> Have a nice day.